poll, though. So Mr. Kate moves, Mr. Sherman seconds. Item one and two, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Measure, or the items carry unanimously with Mr. Ward absent. Thank you very much. All right, we will move on to um, informational part of the agenda. First, we will start with an update from Groundwork San Diego regarding Choyas Creek Regional Park designation. We have a presentation for that. Uh, the council members should have one in front of them. Um, I'll ask the presenters, Vicky Estrada, to come forward and take a seat there at the computer. Make sure your uh, button is turned on for when you're speaking so we could hear you. We had an item uh, at this committee a couple, uh, maybe 18 months <coughs> ago, maybe two years ago, no less than that, about uh, Choyas Creek. And um, this is an update on that as uh, it was identified as a regional park potential. Um, and so we'll have this item today to further discuss that. So it works. who's going to manage your clicker? You've got, oh, awesome. I, Welcome. I like to move my arms and stuff. And <laughs> okay. I, I feel well, a little. Well, you have, um, we have 20 minutes. So. I, I can do it in less right. than that. Do not, do awesome. not be concerned. Thank you. So I am Vicki Estrada, president of Estrada Land Planning. I am uh, a member of the board of, of directors for Groundwork San Diego. Behind me is Leslie Reynolds, our executive director. So if you have questions at the end, we'll certainly be glad to, uh, to respond. So today, some of you are aware of us. I know David's aware, but some of you may not be aware about what's going on. And, and essentially, this is a groundwork um, spawn effort. And I've been working on it, and so has TTG Teresa Wilkinson on it. Now, here's a quote that I put in because when, when we first came up with this concept, people go, what are you talking about? So, you know, so many of our dreams seem at first impossible, then they seem improbable, and then um, when we consume the, uh, summon the will, they uh, soon become inevitable, and that's what we hope would, would happen here. Now, a little bit of background. In 2002, I was lucky enough to work with the city. We put together the Choice Creek uh, Enhancement Plan in 2002. One of the paragraphs in that plan says um, the following. If I can find it here. In fact, let me get the bigger copy. I can't read. The older you get, the little word gets, it gets a little bit tougher. Um, and this is what spawned groundwork, because before 2002, groundwork did not exist. So one of the paragraphs in the report essentially said, to support the long-term improvements and maintenance of Choice Creek, a nonprofit corporation should be created. The Choice Creek Foundation would provide opportunities for individuals, businesses, community organizations, and foundations to support a variety of programs and projects, such as creation of trails, interpretive centers, arts practice, and urban amenities along the creek. Essentially, um, that was us, and the city kind of put groundwork, kind of asked us to put it together, asked Leslie to put it together, and we didn't call it the Choice Creek Foundation. We called it the um, San Groundwork San Diego because we're actually affiliated with Groundwork USA, kind of an inter a national corporation. We are a nonprofit environmental organization, um, and we, in a sense, we are the manager of the Choice Creek watershed, which encompasses about 32 square miles, and it's got 20 linear miles of creek. Now, one of the, some of the things that groundwork has done in our in our short time, I mean, we've done some incredible amount of work, all the way from the master plan for segment five by the YMCA, uh, which um, Urban Corps is in the process now of making actually that a reality. The 47th and Constanza, the Choice Creek Crossing groundwork ourselves. We went out there with community and built that park ourselves. So we've done many, many things. You'll see some of them upcoming. Now, briefly, let's step back, big picture. What you see in green, those are our canyons. Um, and that's really what begins to make San Diego unique. And if you look at this map by Pantoja, you know, the one that the park is named after here downtown, uh, you can see in that little right-hand corner um, the uh, um, uh, Rancheria de las Choyas. And that's where the name came from, okay? Now, one of the things about our canyons, and when you really look at them in an aerial photograph, you begin to sense, you know what? These are our lungs. They bring us nourishment. They bring us life. And um, they really are unique and special. Just look at some of the canyons in City Heights compared to, with all due respect, oh, 120 miles up north, the L.A. Basin, okay? Uh, I'd put yuck in there. It's probably inappropriate to those who live in L.A. 
But it is flat and boring. I could blindfold, blindfold you and then an hour later unblindfold you and still look the same. You know, there's no unique characteristics. We have such a unique opportunity with our topography and our canyons. Now, the current condition of the creek, there's a lot of government channelization over the years. We have very few parks and trails. You see a graphic coming up here in the next slide. We have high levels of pollution, although it's much better than it was in 2002. Um, it's a haven for uh, crime and trash, as you can see in the left-hand corner. And the habitat's been degraded. Note the Arundo on the right-hand side. Now, in terms of the major goals that groundwork has, and this is why this master plan effort has come up, um, they're pretty simple, but, and they're very noble, I think, and they're very doable. Restore the health of the creek. Clean up the stormwater. We've got some, you know, obviously there's some stormwater studies being done for the watershed, and, and we'd like to work together with the stormwater people and the consultants to really make this project happen. Protect sensitive species, restore habitat, make the creek the spine. One of the things the 2002 plan did, up until that time, people threw trash and it was something you, you turned your back on. We felt that the creek could become the spine of the community and become, uh, could carb harbor trails and really begin to connect communities rather than separate them. And that's something that's, that it's beginning to happen. Uh, so we're very happy about that. Improve access to the creek, uh, provide recreational opportunities, and add trails as well. Now, hopefully some of you I have read Richard Liu's book, Last Child in the Woods. That was his first one. He did Nature Deficit Disorder. His last one is Vitamin N for Nature. And one of the things that uh, um, kind of spawned our ideas, Richard had a quote in the book that began to, to kind of plant the seed for an idea. Couldn't our canyons become a sort of a regional park? Yes, there's Mission Trails, and you have Mission Bay, and you have all these self-contained parks, but this would be a little bit different animal. And when you begin to find out the advantages to having a park like this, it's, it really makes a lot of sense. This is a um, study that was done for the San Diego Foundation by um, City Project in LA. The areas in red are those areas that people of color without having access to a car, um, they're way over the average in terms of how close they are to parks. How can you walk to a park? So, so many people um, have don't even be have access to neighborhood parks. And of course, it's a lot of that is most, mostly south of 94, as you can see. Now, very quickly, you might ask, well, what is, a, what is a regional park versus a neighborhood park or a community park? It's an area of land preserved on account of its natural beauty, historic interest, recreational use, or other reason, and other the administration of a local government or agency. So um, there's a lot of different examples for that. I'm not going to read these words. Don't, don't worry about that. But in terms of the major benefits of having a park like this, they drive economies. They provide significant savings, not, I mean, literally money-wise, when you do something like this, it helps stormwater, it helps recreation, health costs, uh, health uh, uh, costs are less because people are healthier. There's so many different things that, it, that uh, benefits that it can do. Higher, healthier, healthier people, you can breathe easier from an environmental standpoint, the habitats are healthier, the, the animals are he health healthier. It reduces carbon footprints, and uh, um, it has very measurable benefit. Now, some more intangible things. One of the things that we found being in Southeast now for so long with groundwork is that if we begin to create this regional park that becomes really, it kind of traverses all of these, these areas, there, it develops a sense of pride that wouldn't otherwise be there, and it begins uh, it's kind of a catalyst for urban renewal. From an educational standpoint, there's environmental things they can learn, interpretive facilities, and they learn how to protect and conserve the open space. Now, very briefly, this is an important slide. Why are we asking this designation? You know, a little bit more detail. Um, the community plan update that was done for um, uh, Southeast and, and Kano actually uh, specified, as you see in the next slide, that we begin to look at this as a regional park. But I'm not going to read too much, but this in red I'm going to read. Groundwork San Diego Choice Creek believes strongly that a regional park designation will create the kind of identity that will inspire stewardship and pride within the watershed, as you just saw, create interest and users from outside the watershed, because in order to be a regional park, it can't just serve the local people. People have got to come from the outside, and we think it can do that. Provide opportunities to integrate with nature, provide places for children to play, 
and, um, and enhance and protect habitat. I grew up in Tecolote Canyon from fourth grade on beneath USD. My playground was Tecolote Canyon, okay? And it wasn't the playground down the street. So they have a lot of benefit, and I'm convinced I would not be a landscape architect today if I would not have had that opportunity to play in the canyon. This is from the community plan update, and it basically says, prepare a comprehensive study analyzing Choyus Creek's outstanding, distinctive natural, cultural, and historic resources of a regional nature for consideration of designation as a regional park. In a few slides, I'll show you how far we've gone so far. Now, are there parts of the park perhaps already in place that we could begin to put together. I'm going to go very quickly through this. The Choice Creek Bayshore Bikeway Trail, we've got um, uh, concept approval for the initial land. We got the Navy to actually let us traverse some of their land. And the, the, the hope is eventually we'll be able to ride a bicycle from Lemon Grove all the way to downtown on a bike trail. Now, wouldn't that be nice? And tie into the Bayshore Bike Trail. And that's very easily done. So th these segments are already underway. Here's what it looks like now. And here's what that trail connection might look like next to the, uh, the, the creek. Um, Berardini Field to Market Street, what you see in yellow there is something Caltrans is looking at to help us continue for that segment of the creek uh, just by the uh, north and east of the police firing range, continuing on tying into the previous slide you just saw, and this one here, Market Street to the Bayshore Barkway. This is bordering David's district and uh, um, uh, also Myrtle's district, so um, this is something that, that's a key kind of all the trails come together here. The Southwest Park has recently been completed. We did the general development plan. The construction drawings have been completed, and I believe it's already gone out to bid. There's a lot of canyons that we started to actually restore. There's bits and pieces, but no overall unity looking at this together. I'm sorry. The, you've probably heard of the Earth Lab at the southwest corner of 94 and Euclid. Uh, it's city school owned property, but we are got access to it and we're creating an incredible place for children to come and learn about nature and gardening and the outdoors. Um, of course, the Choice Lake uh, Park and Reservoir, that's uh, a core of what's there. Now here's the watershed of Choice. You can see it actually encompasses a good part of La Mesa and almost all of Lemon Grove. All of that comes down to 32nd Street which is pretty amazing. So it's quite a watershed. You can kind of see here, just highlighted in blue, are the different branches of the creeks. Now, what this map did, we went out and began to look at the condition. Um, is it concrete? Is it natural? Um, is it go underground? You know, what actually exists in terms of the creek itself? And if we're going to have trails, one of the things that people uh, mentioned, well, Vicky, there's no room. It's a concrete channel. This is the Arroyo Seco on the upper left-hand corner in L.A. There was no room for trails. The trail is actually in the bottom of the concrete channel where there's no room, and then it goes up to, like, the upper right-hand side. So we have opportunities to do that, or we can have trails like we worked on in the lower right-hand corner, um, the uh, uh, Choice Creek Restoration just east of Euclid and just south of Market, and many canyon trails like you see there in Penasquitas Canyon. This image begins to put it all together. Those green asterisks are parks or existing schools. And what you see in orange are potential trail linkages to begin to tie all this together. And right now, the city uh, and, and Helix uh, Environmental is helping the city put together um, a water quality study and looking at potential areas to revegetate and we can begin to use for and to enhance the water quality. So there probably are monies available that if we can work together, maybe have access to some of those money, we can work in conjunction with stormwater to make some of these uh, water quality things really begin to happen. Improve the water quality, improve the recreation access, and make everybody happy all the way around. Now, can a, an existing concrete channel be restored back to um, uh, revegetate it? It can be. This was that uh, Choyas Creek just east of Euclid, okay? Just south of the market, what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now, okay? So that's before and that's after, so it definitely can happen. Now, is this gonna be easy to do? The challenge here, unlike Mission Trails, it's all city-owned. 
We've got bits, of, uh, bits, bits and pieces of city-owned property. We've got private property. We've got canyons. We've got hillside review areas where we've got insensitive habitat. So it is going to be a challenge to make all this work with all the different land uses and um, uh, easements and so forth. Now, what might the park begin to look like? This is the first cut that I put together showing um, you know, the yellow are the linkages. Say, for example, there's a park here and a park here. And I mean, the canyon here and the canyon here is a park in the middle. What we want to do is, like the urban greening studies that Canyonlands and others have done, tie it together with all that and begin to make those streets special. There's a system, a linkage, so the Choice Park integrates then with the special green streets. This is Manzanita Canyon showing, well, how might that trail work up through there? Private property, we can have easements. There's lots of things we can do. The lower left-hand corner of that trail could exist within the Caltrans right-of-way. We did Tweet Street up here on Cortez Hill. That, that neat little park that we got to design, we were able to convince Caltrans to move the fence back. It was leftover land Caltrans wasn't using. That Now it's this nice little park that the neighborhood can use. We can do things like this. We have met preliminarily with Caltrans, talked about the idea. Here's what I mentioned earlier. We're almost done, David, not to worry. Um, this is Manzanita Canyon and Hollywood Canyon on your right. What are you talking about, Vicki? What are you talking about special streets? And here in the bottom is what that might begin to look like. We narrow the street. We put double rows of trees so it becomes a parkway as such. Uh, some examples. With a trail, and if you got a nice, uh, lots of space, a trail next to the creek, not a problem. But sometimes the, the, the creeks are either underground or they're not accessible. You might have a situation like in the bottom where you have open space in the creek, it goes underground. And the street, the trail then has to be that special street that I just showed you. And we also have a situation like this. So there's a lot of, of, of opportunities and ways to make this thing happen. Now, very briefly, what has been done? Because um, that's the purpose of the day is kind of kind of a, a status of where we are in terms of the process. So we've done the, the the regional park feasibility study, which you have, I think, in your in your uh, your papers here. The Park and Rec Board uh, approved that the feasibility study um, last year. Uh, the Choice Creek Watershed Opportunities Plan. You should have been given a copy of that as well. And watershed planning considerations and existing conditions, a lot of these little projects have already been done. All of this has been done. We've had a series of legislati legislators' meetings, and this is in um, the mayor's office. We had uh, Greg Cox. We had Navy people there. We had a lot of different people to try to get this to happen, and we have gotten nothing but unanimous encouragement and approval to, yes, let's make this happen. So next steps. What do we do now, so <laughs> obtain a recommendation park and recreation board to study the concept of regional park designation. That's been done. All that, all the approved was a feasibility study. Is this something that should be taken to the next step? And they said yes. Okay, a watershed opportunities plan. That's been done. Uh, we need to kind of take that opportunities plan to the next level and get some sort of approval from it. That's a basis for what the master plan would be. Now, a key thing for us is obtain funding and approval to prepare this master plan and any related documents, like the environmental review process uh, documents that we would need, approve the master plan, and then designate and create the regional park. How long might this take? You know, being a planner and, and doing this kind of work, we expect that we could do this within uh, two years, okay? And based on projects I've worked on and what other similar projects throughout the country, we expect the overall fee to be one to one point two million dollars, which is really not that much because this is not a simple park like in one self contained area. There's a lot of different uh, uh, coordination issues that got to be uh, put together. So, what we would like you to do somehow, and, and I don't want to expect you to do it, but maybe as staff and the different departments, if we can begin to make this master plan a higher priority. And as I s just mentioned, we need city funding, and it can come from a variety of sources, uh, whether it's stormwater, whether it's uh, greening. There's a lot of different possibilities, um, uh, the Regional Water Quality Board, to begin the process and to make it easier rather than ask for $1.2 million. We like to ask for, um, you know, what you probably get by was a little 300000 to 500000 to start the first phase. And then the second phase then would be up to 750000 to carry through to the next level. So I... Did it under 20 minutes, yes, David? Okay. 
I could talk much slower and make it Ten an hour. Seconds. <laughs> I don't think you want that. <laughs> so right. I'm here. Leslie is here if you have any specific questions. But hopefully I tried to make you a little bit more excited. You got a sense of how excited I am. This is a great project. and it's noth Nothing like this has been really done before anywhere. A regional park over public and private properties and, and, and state properties and really begin to look at this in a totally different frame of mind. All right. Thank you very much. That's it? it? Well, we're going to have questions. Oh, so okay, good. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Leslie, for your service on this as well. So uh, we don't have public comments, so we'll start with committee members. Mr. Sherman. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you're talking about the formation of a foundation. Is that foundation put together yet, or, or is that started? Now, the, what, when it mentioned the Shaw's Creek Foundation, that was in a 2002 report. That foundation became us. Okay. The foundation is groundwork. Okay. So they basically said a, a nonprofit of a sort should be put together to begin to make this happen, and that's what formed bar groundwork. Gotcha. Because that's uh, one of the things that helped with Mission Trails and getting oh, yeah. and getting that started was that we, foundation. It, it, we're already in place. Okay. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure that that instrument was there so we could work together to try and help make something happen. Um, and with Mission Trails coming to fruition, there may be a couple of staffers open who could work on this one after. So. Perfect. Yeah. See, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I, I have a couple questions, unless Mr. Kate has some. Okay. Um, it, this great overview. I mean, some of us who have been uh, on the ground at Choyas uh, in many of these areas have, have seen the, the work that's been done, and it's nice to sort of see it all brought together. And I want to thank you for, for doing that and for your... Um, constant work uh, on this and certainly as you mentioned Choyas Creek is quite unique it's in a very urban um, location um, it, it's gonna have challenges that I think we probably haven't uh, faced at all in any regional parks and so um, it is gonna require extensive work and I think Mr. Sherman is right with the uh, culmination of, of Mission Trails um, there's an opportunity here to, to <coughs> to further the good work that this, you know, the city has a record of really um, being forward thinking when it comes to, um, to, to our environment and, yep. and uh, this is a unique opportunity. So, um, Vicki, you, you uh, mentioned the approval of a watershed opportunity plan. Yes. What, what does that mean and how would we do that? Well, again, this is a little bit different process. I don't know, um, Kevin, if you were able, I think I, I, I gave you access to basically the main document and the second one, which actually is, uh, I don't know if you have the doc. It's basically taking that feasibility study to the next level. And those maps that I showed you and showed the condition of the creek and uh, where the trails might be, that's where that they came from that document. Okay. okay. So it's just something we put together. So we weren't sure, well, does that have to be approved? Does somebody at the city at Park and Rec or at planning have to look into this? Yes, it conforms to their community plans, and it's something that we should have happen, and it can be used as a basis to begin to form the park master plan. So this, this being a little different process than Balboa Park or other master plans that I've worked on, that was an intermediate step that I plugged in. Yeah, and, and we have that. Um, but so given your experience being involved in this yeah. and I, we don't I don't think have any staff from um, uh, planning parks planning unless somebody's here raise your hand no okay who's been helping us on that is, is Jeff Harkness okay um, but is this a rec like a requirement that somebody said you've got to go out and do this or is this was more of a uh, you took the initiative because this was important to do as part of a planning process what how did this uh, work product come to be well, um, what lesson do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because you probably know more about where the money is going. No, I think uh, I think that the it's just foundational, really, to provide uh, impetus for the whole regional park planning process. What was required, according to Jeff, was the feasibility study. So Groundwork raised those funds and uh, completed that study, which Vicki said was approved by Parks and Rec Board. So the follow-up is the opportunities assessment, which really, as she says, is foundational to next steps. But it's finding the funny funding for the master plan that's been the real challenge over the last. So, so Vicky uh, said we needed to approve this, or well, there needs I, to be I, approval. Well, I, I did put that down right there. Okay, approve the watershed opportunities plan. 
Um, would there be or, something Parks and Rec would take on them? Well, how about accept for that rather than approve? I mean, yeah. I don't know exactly what the words would be, uh, whether it's Park and Rec or whether it's uh, the, 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 you know, uh, Robbins, um, Jeff Park and Assist Division that works more on the planning side. Right. I'm not sure which department it would come from. Okay. It, it is a park project. It's a regional park project, but it's kind of a hybrid, you yeah. know, between planning and parks. The, does the mayor's office or in somebody, can they weigh in on where this would go? So in terms of what this committee can do today. Yeah, we're not taking action on this today, but we're right. looking for advice on this watershed opportunity plan. It would seem that a, a request would need to go to the appropriate staff through the mayor's office to okay. get feedback from them as to whether they would need to bring it forward for action as a separate item. Okay. Well, when we get to sort of direction, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, let me ask a couple more, more questions. Um, the the costs associated yes. with doing this and phasing it in. Yes. Um, it, it's going to take two years, so a phase-in approach of, of over funding over two years, I think, makes sense. Um, this is comparable to, to what, uh, given that? Well, your... Um your parks master plan that you had interv right. interviewed for about uh, three weeks ago, so you had allocated 1.4 million for that, yes. which is looking at parks more on a regional basis. So it's it's almost like that, but a lot more focus on just the Choice Creek watershed and more detailed. It's a plan. It's an actual. Why don't you come on up? So. Well, and she was going to say, and the, oh. I was going to give you other examples. There's San Diego, San Diego oh, River see. Park, the Ciotai Valley, uh, where it's, park. It, it goes through different jurisdictions. You right. know, it's that kind of thing, except they don't go through quite as many private property things as we do. Right. So that's what makes this a little bit different. So there's nothing, nothing, David, exactly comparable. Um, but in terms of the kind of work effort that we see the final product being would be something like the uh, San Diego River okay. master plan. And, um, but it would be a plan, an actual plan document. It would yes. be like the master plan for parks is more of a, a higher level view of our plans. It, it is, that, although that plan is supposed to be making some rec basic concept recommendation for certain parks, what kind of uses and so forth that would right. happen. But it's also about connecting and using the canyons like we're talking about as part of the big system. So it's, it's all coming together and beginning to make some sense. But, um, in that work, groundwork has not been approached to sort of incorporate Choyas as part of the master plan? Not yet. Okay. However, you know, I am part of one of the teams. I don't know if they choose it. If we get selected to be on that team, oh, oh, then I will make sure that he gets integrated <laughs> into the So we process. haven't made a... Uh, I, 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 uh, I have not heard that the city has made a decision on who okay. they're cho choosing yet, no. I know we've been trying to, for a couple of years, um, yes. expedite the master plan. And, and it, it took a couple of years of funding, and so it yes. sounds like we're in that phase yes. now. Yes. Okay. Um, the, uh, what else was I going to ask in the presentation? Um, what are the other projects that are sort of, I think you had a slide that you um, went over rather quickly for the time, which we appreciate. But there was one where you talked about the projects completed and sort of the right. projects coming, right. I guess. Um, can you go to that one? I know the Bayshore Bikeway um, well, component is yeah. funded. I have some extra slides in the, in the back here. Um, questions um, here's one of the graphics by the way that 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 you did not see that shows the kind of detail we went through in terms of our environmental opportunities um, the recreation element and how it talks about this by the way this picture this was remember um, Apple Yard and Lynch's temporary paradise you know this is from that report and it specifically talks about choice Creek and unfortunately as I mentioned earlier a lot of the creek was channelized and uh, but there are many places where we do have room, like, for example, around the YMCA site, to, to unchannelize that. Um, this is a project that, that Jacobs put together um, that had MIG uh, work on trying to be, use the creek as a linkage seat. So it's not just us. You know, Jacobs has begun to look at this. Um, we, um, the, the Choice Creek restoration that I had mentioned earlier, um, the radio tower that's part of the, the National Avenue master plan is kind of a junkyard now. All of these little little pieces have been put together. A lot, Earth Lab has taken up a lot of our, our time. We're very proud of that. We got a brand new um, project. I don't know if we need to get into detail, but for the northwest quadrant 
of, uh, of uh, bounded by 805-94 um, uh, Euclid and Market Street, to working with SCG&E and the State Energy Commission to actually begin to utilize gr more green techniques to generate energy, and that's kind of tied into this so as well. So the slide, uh, Vicky, I'm looking at, it doesn't have a number, but it's before the legislators' briefings? Yes. Where you sort of have um, a listing of yeah. what's been done? Yep. And that's what I'm interested in. Are, are oh, okay. any of these actually being, so are these all completed? Because. Okay, you can, you, let me get to that slide. So the Bayshore Bikeway, as you know, council member, is uh, in the city now, and we're expecting to write a grant for the city to go for construction funding to Sandag for that project right. in uh, December, assuming the uh, construction drawings are done. Um, we have a project just funded for about a half million dollars by Irwin to de-channelize the federal uh, boulevard segment at Home Avenue, create a trail, and uh, create water quality improvements. We've just finished a master plan for the Earth Lab, which is about probably a five million dollar master plan, and we're working on funding there. We've been having really good meetings with Stormwater, you're hearing from them a, a bit later on some other topics, to overlay our restoration efforts on their uh, high quality or uh, high priority stormwater uh, projects. So we're working in concert there. And we've been invited by the regional board to submit a SEP application, which could partially fund the regional park master plan to look at uh, the implications for the regional park designation for water quality improvements. Okay. So those are, we have, I mean, many other things. We've completed uh, $700,000 in canyon restoration for Radio Canyon with Sandag funds, and I could go on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. Okay. But well, with, um, with, with that in mind and trying to move forward, because I think that's the goal anyway from um, the community's perspective, certainly from your perspective, I, I was part of the, the briefing that you mentioned. Um, I think the port commissioner was there, the, yeah. the <coughs> county was there, uh, the, the city was there. Uh, what does the city need to do next in order to move us along this path? And I, I, they, yeah, first. they need to fund the regional park. I know there was a, a letter to the mayor for the mayor uh, last budget cycle from four legislators, and uh, it was not included in the mayor's budget, but we're hoping perhaps this year or from some other source we could get at least partial funding. And as I say, Groundwork will continue to seek funding to complement the city's effort there. Right. If we had somebody who became a real champion to make this happen, you know, like, wow, we've got to make this happen. That's the kind of thing we need, whether it's a mayor or you, David, or somebody else. Uh, I think that's one of the things that, that we need when it comes from up above and they get excited, it begins to filter down. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you for that. I, I'm going to um, just make some comments. And um, I think I like Mr. Sherman's idea of taking existing um, individuals whose time was dedicated to something else and putting them to work on on new and exciting projects like this one um, I would love to get feedback um, probably not today unless you want to respond to that idea well the only the only thing I would look to clarify is that staff follows the work program so when they complete one item they'll move on to the next in the approved work program okay so they're they don't finish a program and then suddenly have free time, they move on to the next item in the work plan, so. Do you um, know what they're working on now? I wouldn't expect to I know that today. I don't have that in front of me. Well, I, I certainly would like to um, inquire about that and figure out what's being worked on next. Yeah, and ju just a quick word of caution too, Jeff uh, Harkness is retiring as soon as this comes before council. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's gonna be a problem. Um, and then uh, you wouldn't know at this time whether um, it's uh, in the budget this year, the request for funding for this? <laughs> uh, I do not know if this is in our proposed budget, so. Okay. How would, a pro how would a project like this make it sort of to the work program that you mentioned? That is probably a better question for staff to answer. Okay. Um, I can definitely take that to staff and we can respond. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I would I would ask that uh, that staff uh, and I assume that's planning or it would be um, 
regional park staff, or combination of both, I assume, um, to, to, to try to f help us figure that out, how to bring back, um, how to include this in the, in the working program for, for them um, and what that would require. And I assume a lot of this funding actually would pay for consultants, not necessarily staff. Um, and so additional staff might not be necessary besides the oversight that is required. But um, I do um, intend to bring this back to committee at some point this year to, uh, as an action item to, to see how we can uh, either identify funding sources, incorporate it if we have to through action into the work program. Um, this is certainly a, a priority, uh, council member, um, from District 9, uh, Georgia Gomez, Council President, um, dist representing District 4, Myrtle Cole, certainly myself, and I think it is, uh, uh, it would be neat to have a regional park like this in San Diego and continue down the path that we, uh, the history that we have, um, believing in, in our strong park system, regional park system. Last question, maybe you would know on this, uh, how would we get county participation sort of through a JPA type of agreement or, um, do you, have you ever talked to Supervisor Cox about that? Yes, we have talked to Greg about this, and you know, as you know, he was a pretty consistent uh, attendee at the stakeholder meetings we have, and he's actually given us money from the county funds to help fund some of the projects that you just saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I do think there's a possibility um, that the county can participate in this because it benefits everybody, and it actually although the county out parcel out there by Greenwood Cemetery is still county land and not city land, it's still Didn't we it's a process to become city land. I think we've, it's now city land. I it, it's already happened? I know it's I in process. Did. I don't yeah. know if it's actually going to officially happen. But to answer your question, is there an opportunity to work, the county can help us? Yes. Okay. Well, um, at, when we do discuss this item in the future, it might, we might require some help from assistance from the city attorney's office as to how a JPA would work, just to inform us on that and certainly from the staff's perspective as well as how that would work. So um, this today was an informational item. Like I said, we'll probably have this uh, at some point this year with more action directed. So okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for all your work on this. And uh, no motion is needed, but we will move on to item number four, uh, transportation and stormwater. They are giving us an update on the winter storms for 2016-17. Um, and the work that's been done to maintain our channels. I wanted to uh, start off by saying thank you to all the staff uh, at Transportation and Stormwater for the work done last year. As I think you'll hear during the presentation today, it really made a difference in what happened or did not happen um, and what was covered uh, in the news or not 